Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mini Courses Episode Three. Am I Rain, a member of the G11N SIG of the Open Oil Community? In this episode and the next one, we will talk about the Crash Utility, a tool that allows you to analyze the state of the Linux system while it is running, or of a core dump resulted from a kernel crash. Previously, in episode one, we talked about the K-dump. However, the creation of a kernel crash dump file is only half of the picture. A utility is thus required to recognize the dump file format in order to read it and to offer a useful set of commands to make sense of it. So the crash utility was developed as a convenient means to investigate almost all dump file formats as well as the live systems. In this mini course, I will only talk about some commonly used commands, and I will use a simple case to explain how to use the crash utility to troubleshoot kernel panics. For more details about the crash utility, you can read the white paper at the below link. Let's assume that the prerequisites for running the crash utility are ready, including the kernel object file, memory image, compatible platform processor types, and Linux kernel versions. To invoke the crash utility, we use the crash vm linux vm core command. When the crash utility is run on a dump file, at least two arguments are always required. First, the kernel object file name, often referred to as the kernel name list. When initially built from the kernel sources, its name is vm linux. Second, the dump file name, typically named as vm core. This is a typical invocation output, given that all invocation arguments are in order. Such an output lists the basic information about the crash. The text in red indicates the panic reason. In this example, the panic is caused by a null pointer. Information such as the panic reason, PID, and version needs to be carefully checked in this output. Now let's look at some of the most commonly used commands. The first one, of course, is help, which gets all supported commands in the current version and descriptions about each command. For example, we run help bt and we will see in the output the description of this command and its options. The crash utility commands are usually classified into four categories. Symbolic display of kernel text or data, utility functions, session control, and system state. For each category, I'm not going to list all the commands one by one. I'll just introduce those we use more often. First, the commands for a symbolic display of kernel text or data. These commands typically take full advantage of the power of GDB to display kernel data structures symbolically. Struct which displays either a structure definition or a formatted display of the contents of a structure at a specified address. For example, we use the net command to get a network device. Then we use the struct command to get details about its structure members. This, which disassembles the text of a complete kernel function or from a specific address for a given number of instructions or from the beginning of a function up to a specified address. In this example, this L is used to display source code line number data in addition to the disassembly output. P, which displays the contents of a kernel variable, the arguments are passed on to GDB's print command for proper formatting. And SIM, which translates a symbol to its virtual address or vice versa. Second, the commands of utility functions. This set of commands are useful helper commands serving various purposes, such as list, which dumps the contents of a linked list. The entries in a linked list are typically data structures that are tied together. Search, which searches a range of a user or a kernel memory space for a given value. An optional mask value may be entered to mask off don't care bits. And RD, which reads memory with the output formatted in several different manners. 
Then it's the session control commands. These commands typically aid in the efficient running of a crash session. Here, I only list the most often used set command, which either sets a new context or gets the current context for display. OK, that's it for episode 3. Let's take a break. In the next episode, we will continue with the commands and the simple case study. Stay tuned and see you soon.